Looking at Kingston history, it's very complex, very multifaceted, stems back to over 11,000 years ago, and it's just been one layer after another. I think a question that we should be asking, what really is heritage conservation? And it's looking to protect and to save something that existed in the past, whether it's a physical object or a story, and allow that to exist for the future. Built Heritage tells the story of our military past, our commercial past, the nature of our community, the nature of the values of people, with the style of houses they built. But that's, that's the material heritage. There's also a non-material heritage, an intangible heritage. The, 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 Kingston is also a storied place, and, it's, and that's what intangible heritage is all about. The best example is how we're beginning to appreciate the story of the First Nations. Heritage encompasses um, the culture, our culture, it, it encompasses um, history, archaeology, all those things that have brought us to where we are today. And our natural environment is just as important a heritage that we have to take care of as our built environment. Heritage contributes to the quality of life, the sense of place of Kingston, my identity with Kingston. is part of my responsibility to help create this identity with Kingston and its past, the value of it, that's very important. And also, it's a resource. And the 1970s was a pretty exciting decade. Uh, there was a lot of unfortunate activity in demolition. And although the citizens tried to uh, control this through legislation, through demonstrations, even a march right down Princess Street, the buildings were lost. So the Moat building fell, the uh, county jail fell, the uh, counter house. But I'd like to think that those sort of victims, so to speak, were the catalyst for the next decade of the 80s and 90s in which demolition became less prevalent. The real catalyst came with the destruction of the front portico of the City Hall. It was taken down in 1956, I believe. The portico was restored in time for the uh, centennial year of Canada in uh, 1967. The key period is 1975 when Kingston had its Heritage Act and the same year Ontario had its Heritage Act read in Kingston. In 1960, uh, Gordon Stevenson, who's an internationally known uh, planner, and I uh, wrote this uh, planning study of uh, 1960, there was no act. So that committee decided that they should ask for special legislation and it applied for it and received special legislation as it's still there in the books known as the City of Kingston Act. Our mayor at the time was the late Valerie Swain. He had a uh, very close hand, along with Margaret Angus, of writing this act, which was then sent down to uh, Queen's Park and Pass. So we finally got a Heritage Act that worked, and because of Kingston's involvement in the whole program of heritage legislation, the Lieutenant Governor came down here and proclaimed the Act in the Kingston City Hall. One of the important phenomena of the uh, 1970s was the work by Margaret Angus. She focused in on stone buildings and buildings built previous to 1867. She was a very dynamic person and was very much involved in government legislation as a volunteer in the community and uh, a very outspoken, in the best sense of the word, uh, speaker. I think it's important that we can try and preserve what we have to have it as a living thing that people still use. And Barryfield's a lovely example. It was designated, I think, 1980, 1981, um, some say it was one of the first um, heritage districts in Ontario, but Pittsburgh always maintained that it was the first. And we were quite proud of that, actually, because we were only a small municipality. We didn't have even 10,000 people at that time. Gerald and I have together restored six properties in the old Sydenham Heritage Conservation District. Our starting point has always been respect for the structure, and this has remained our top priority as we make decisions about our properties. Because of our passionate community, we've been able to protect over 1,200 buildings, individual buildings, 
and then eventually three heritage conservation districts. Um, for a city of this size, it's, it's quite a large amount. So we have to be able to think in terms of respecting the past while understanding that architects still will create and will produce new buildings.